Yo, theologians in Camaros drinking coffee. I am Michael Patton, and that is Ollie if he peeks his head up. We are going to talk to you about the most misinterpreted passages of Scripture. Um, I got a big long list. I'm not going to talk to them all about all of them this time, but we'll start going through them, maybe get through them within the next few episodes. We'll see. But the number one on the list, the first one on the list, we usually do a countdown backwards, but uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I think, the most misinterpreted passage of scripture because it's obvious. You know, the way you get down to the, the countdown, if you go to number one, you want to get to the one that people don't know about or you don't know about that you're misinterpreting. So I'm going to start with a most misinterpreted scripture, I believe it is, and that is Matthew 18, 20. And that is the passage that says, where two or, th or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst, at least according to the good old King James Bible. Um, why is this passage, or how is this passage used, first of all? Well, it's used normally in people's prayer context. Whenever you are with a group of people, whenever you are standing in a circle and, um, you know, somebody, it's somebody's turn to pray and they start off by saying, Lord, you say that uh, where two or, th or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. We know you are in our midst. And the idea is because we've got lots of people here, or at least more than two. And so it's kind of an invocation uh, for the Lord and his presence. It's kind of almost and can be used in an idolatrous way if you think that because you have multiple people that there's some type of power that is involved there that the Lord has obligated himself to, kind of like, you know, an idol that he is, that he, it's an arm twisting. Because we have two or three, Lord, you, you have to be here and you have to listen and you have to grant our request. And that's the ultimate purpose. Now, I don't think most people do this that way or do it intentionally. Most people don't know they're taking it out of context. The thing that I often wonder is, uh, you know, especially whenever I'd hear people before I knew the passage, I would wonder, what, what does it mean if you're praying by yourself? I mean, is he not with us? Is is the Lord only present whenever you get multiple people? And in what sense does do, do prayers uh, by myself help? And so that, that was always a very obvious question. But the answer is that uh, it's the same whether you're praying by yourself or with multiple people. The Lord's presence does not change. He does not come down into our midst whenever we pray with multiple people or gather with multiple people who are Christians. Um, what the, if you look in the context of it, you'd have to back up to Matthew 18, verse 15, and you will see that the, um, the idea has to do with the discipline of a brother or, or when a brother sins against you, whenever somebody that is uh, within the church or, when, or it could even be applied to a friend broadly, the principal could. But whenever somebody sins against you, somebody does you wrong, the whole process that is worked out from Matthew chapter 15, or uh, Matthew 18, verse 15 through 19, is just a, is just a common process. It's a, it's a very um, biblical process. It's something that goes back into the Old Testament. Whenever, whenever um, uh, somebody was being accused of something, they could not be accused or, or be held guilty unless there was evidence from multiple people or there were multiple witnesses. So going all the way back to the Mosaic Code, you have this. And this is what it's drawing from. Whenever it goes through the process of a brother who comes and sins against you, or you believe that he has done something wrong to you, you go first and tell him in private, in private, in private, I say, because <laughs> it's so important. First thing we usually do is go public with it. But you go to him in private because God, God is concerned about people's reputation. If you go to him and he admits his sin in private, or you realize that he hasn't really done anything, you've you've misunderstood it. Then you, at least you haven't spread this gossip and and created false views of people that that uh, are very just about impossible to get that that toothpaste back into the tube there. And so you go to him in private, and then if he does not admit and 
ask for forgiveness and you still believe that he is wrong, then you go and uh, you get two or three people. Uh, and that's just from from uh, the the Old Testament. That's what the Old Testament says to do. Now I, I don't I think <laughs> I don't know whether it's two or three. <laughs> I wish you would tell us. Is it two or three? Which one? But I, that's just kind of a common way of saying multiple people, two or three, more than one. In other words, so you go get other people who are not your wingmen, but are unbiased people to come to listen to both sides to try to figure out who's at fault. And then if your brother is found to be at fault by these multiple people, then you bring them before the church. And the, the, in this context is where it talks about uh, where two or three people are gathered in my name. There I am in your midst. What does it mean for Christ to be in people's midst? Well, in the context, it's, it's simply talking about the authority of Christ. It's not talking about the infallibility that it's automatically right. It's just, it's just kind of a stamp of approval God is putting upon this process by saying he is in their midst. You have done well. If your brother sins against you, go to him in this process. And if you do it right, you have done it well. And I am there. I am there giving you a thumbs up. That's basically what it's saying. So, it has nothing to do with your prayer life. Do not worry. You do not have to gather with other people in order for Christ to be present. Uh, but um, there is an authority that comes whenever you do follow this process correctly.